word. Ho, ho, ho. Welcome to the Bayside Word. We are a group of friends from around the world where we share our thoughts and opinions on interesting articles. I am Devin and I'm here with Emma. Ha, ha, hi. I'm here with CJ. Ho, ho, hello. And I'm here with Alexander. Ah, ah, ah. Hoi! <laughs> Maxi <laughs> is unavailable. He got called up to the Santa's uh, workshop, and he's slaving away for the so the kids have um, toys on Christmas. Well, yeah, Christmas. I, I actually didn't realize you, this. You but just call Max. A, just call him an elf. A worker. <laughs> but yes. Well, if he, according to um, Arthur Christmas, the movie, he the elves are ninja elves, so he's a ninja elf, Maxi. Oh. Um, but uh, I just found out through Maxi's communications that Norway, I guess, celebrate their Christmas tomorrow, which would be the nineteenth. What do you mean? Uh, no, it would be the twentieth of December. Is um. Is Norway a pro- predominantly Catholic? I don't know. Because he said... None of us, he I don't said, think any of us know because none of us live in Norway. You, that's a question you have to ask Maxi. <laughs> yeah, this would have been a better conversation if he was there. I mm. feel like... Um, yeah, um, unfortunately, the person that can give you the answer to that question is not here to see No, wait, 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 wait. wait. Speaking of... Maxi did say we can call him if we need to check anything. Yeah. Let's call Maxi and just double check when's Christmas. Let's just message him. Let's not bother him. Let's just I, yeah. Him. I I feel like that's that's an abuse of power. Yeah. That one. <laughs> uh, well, that's what I wanted to do today. <laughs> I just, you're 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 like destroying yeah. my. A- a- Emma's got some new power and she got abused it today. <laughs> well, we'll find a we'll find a reason. Don't worry. But s- speaking of um, Can you also ask I guess him Christmas. If it's a Christmas. predominantly Catholic country. What was that, Alexander? Speaking of Christmas tradition, this week we had some uh, quizzes um, at work, and I guessed an answer and got it right, and I was really quite Im- impressed. Is probably the wrong word. Surprised is more of a word. So the question was: Name three countries that open their presents on Christmas Eve. Germany, Philippines. I mean, I don't know the answers, Russia. by the way. Like, there's lots of countries, <laughs> but I, f- I feel like that's a like, I I was just impressed, not impressed, surprised that I what? guessed three countries and all of them were right. Oh, you did? Okay, so Maxi said they celebrate on the 21st. Okay, so I said 20th. Are they a predominantly Catholic country? So Alex, that's wrong. what were the countries? I said Poland, Germany, and Austria. And all three were right. Hmm. Oh, he just took a wild, you know, stab in the dark. Just a wild guess. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, like the team we were playing, one of one of the girls on the other team was Polish, and she looked really excited by the See, questions. So I was like, well, Poland's definitely one of them. Because why would you be that excited to answer this question otherwise? M- m- like, m- maybe she finds questions exciting. Don't judge. <laughs> See, the way that you've come up with that conclusion, Alexander, I've been watching Sherlock Holmes, and it seems like you used the deduction method there. It was you. I do do a lot of Sherlock Holmes series are you watching? Elementary, my dear. Are you you watching Elementary? I think that's finished now. Yeah, but that's nine seasons. I still got like nine to go or eight to go. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) I've watched them all. So I take it back. It kind of does dip off at the end. They don't celebrate on the 20th. They celebrate on the 24th. I was wrong. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> they're one of they're one of the other one of the countries that open on the twenty fourth. Yep, yep, yep. Um, yeah, yeah. The, the deductive reasoning is my probably my favourite kind of reasoning. I um, like that. It's also the only reasoning that I know a name of, so <laughs> that'll be why. <laughs> I got uh, reasoning, logical reasoning. Is that a thing? Is logical reasoning? I mean. That, to me, that is just deductive reasoning. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I guess like erratic reasoning. Uh. <laughs> and the main the main line is that is because I said so. Um, <laughs> uh, CJ, you use that reasoning. You use that reasoning a lot. Yeah. It's a good reasoning. <laughs> 
So I was wrong. Do you know why it's good reasoning? Christmas. I said so. Is tomorrow <laughs> because that's when he is celebrating Christmas with his partner's family, uh, and then he'll spend real Christmas with his family. Oh, he's going back to England, is he? Oh, he is. Oh. He's going to be back in the UK for a while. Oh, interesting. Oh. How come? He's quarantine. Um, f- fam. Yeah, he has to quarantine when he gets here. So he's going to be here, I think, until like mid mid January. Just after mid January. Oh, so well. Hopefully, you might see a a link up of podcasties. Oh, in here. I wonder how that's going to work. At least you won't need to sleep in your kitchen was, this time. Why we're going to share about it, Mr. Ernest? <laughs> you, you, should you can sleep on your sofa. You should definitely watch the UK series of Sherlock. Right, that's great. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I don't know. Once I've seen, once I've seen a character that I like in a fictional character, is it fictional or fake? Yeah. Yes. 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 Fictional Fiction's character. Not weird. Yeah. It's not real. You know, that's another thing that I found real, weird. It wouldn't be fictional. Uh, like you go non-fiction and fiction. I find that weird. Like a like fiction, and then they say I always non-fiction. Went, yeah, I always got it confused when I was younger. I was like, why yeah. wouldn't you just? switch it around because it's logical that way anyway anyways it took, um, it took me it took me an embarrassingly long time to get those two the right way around as well i think i was an adult before i was like oh yeah yeah oh, that's, same that's here right well I, same was, here. I was today i was today years old <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get on. Oh, okay. Let's get on. So, um, all right then, amber grease. I don't know if that's how you say it, but amber grease. That's what we're talking about. Am- Did you say amber grease? Amber grease. Amber grease or amber grease? Is it grease that's that's like amber? No, or it's G R I S. Amber grease. Amber grease. Amber grease. Am- what are you talking? <laughs> so, well, <laughs> I'm confused. I'm actually quite. I'm actually quite confused. So, Wait until you hear this. A fisherman was um, working <laughs> and was fishing. As they do. Uh, in Thailand. Now, now where they're fishing? And uh, so his name was Naris, Naris Suanasang, 60-year-old fisherman. So he's fishing and uh, he comes across uh, a blob, a blob. Of of ambergris. Ambergris. And uh, what's ambergris? I'm gonna. We're so gonna tell you now. We we we'll, we'll see. So uh, it looks like it's like pale rock like um, lumps. Any any sees them? They've been sort of washed up on the beach. <clears throat> oh, he wasn't. He wasn't. He wasn't fishing at the time. He was walking. He was walking on the beach. And uh, wait, can I ask guys? Go. What do you think ambergris is? Go. Without looking in the article, what's ambergris? Rocks, by the sounds of it. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Siege? I, I reckon slippery rocks. Like what if I said? Uh, what if I said the um, the ambergris? You, you can say anything. We don't know. What if I say <laughs> per kilo an ambergris is worth twenty three thousand seven hundred forty pounds? If it's but if it's why? of high enough quality. That's ex- what, what do you think it is that now? That is expensive ambergris. <laughs> I bet we're saying it what wrong. What do I think it is now? Yeah. Rocks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be fair, a diamond is just a rock, right? Yeah. So, yeah, there is yeah. precious rocks. Sorry, rock, I'm just there. doing a, 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 gro- a Google, how do you say? Oh, amber grease. Amber grease. Is it like amber grease? Amber grease. Amber grease. Amber grease. Right? Uh, Looking at it, it is it like an uh, ember an, 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 an looking rock? So it actually is whale vomit. And the expression on our exam is well. <laughs> so I kid you not, I kid you not. Naris saw these uh, what looked like pale rock, pale lumps. He would probably know what they are. So, well, he did know what they are. And he's like, ooh, amber grease. Now, he usually works for uh, £500 a month. And his eyes light up. Bing! Cha-ching! He stumbled 
on what could be possibly worth 2.4 million pounds worth of ambergris. Now, why is whale vomit so special and expensive? Who the hell wants whale vomit? (laughs) So apparently it's considered a sea treasure, basically like floating gold. And it's because, so when it first is vomited up, it smells like um, fish. It smells like vomit. almost like manure, like composty manure But then it changes to a sweet smelling, and it's because uh, it's got this alcohol substance in it. So it's this odorless alcohol that they extract to make perfume scent last longer. Perfumes. So the top Can- brands of perfume makers need this ambergris to help their perfume scent smell last longer. Who is... Hold on. <laughs> you mean to tell me, you guys, ladies, have been... I've been kissing ladies' necks, yeah. right? Yeah. We've been putting the perfume You love on, the whale vomit. Right? And it's freaking made of whale vomit? The alcohol so from I've the whale vomit. I've been kissing <laughs> whale vomit? Yeah. Who? <laughs> Never having sex again. It is a very expensive Who? ingredient. Or, or on our questions like, where did you spray the perfume? So for those ladies that are wearing <laughs> Chanel number no. five, all that, yeah, it's got ambergris in it. The smell, th- I'm still stuck on the smell thing. <laughs> Who can smell underwater? <laughs> but how do they know this? I don't know. Aquaman. I don't it smells... Know. What, where, it smells like manure. Like who's swimming and going? Ooh, wait, wait. Ooh, how much? Where, where oh, wait. Is, oh no, it's getting a little sweeter. Where's this ambergris like, normally found? Are they normally found underwater or on the shoreline? So it says. Uh, ooh, I'll just double check, but it says freshly produced ambergris is said to have a marine fecal-like odor, likened to the smell of farm manure mixed with that of the ocean. <laughs> wait, so I'm confused as well. The rockiness of these ambergris. Yeah. Is this like? Do they come out as rocks okay, or do they turn so, into rocks? The, basically, um, it's believed that the whales... Okay, so I'll tell you about the what, it, what, how, what exactly and how it happens. So it comes from sperm whales. They eat large... <laughs> it's getting worse. Okay, hold on, hold on. It gets worse. worse. No, they it eat large from, volumes of it, cephal, it's the spit cephal, up of a sperm whale. Cephalopods. 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 Yeah. Um, such as squid, octopus, and cuttlefish. Now, they, scientists believe that this ambergris substance is produced to help ease the passing of, of like the harder elements of the, their diet. So shells, beaks, stuff like that. So to help it pass through their digestive system. Mm. So they believe that the whales vomit up the substance um, and then, it yeah, it helps that process. So the ambergris forms in their intestines and passes along usually with poops. Um, forming an obstruction in their bowels rectum yeah um but yeah and so i guess when it's fresh you could scoop it up and that's you get that smell but after it after a while it ages and it gets a sweet smell and like an earth smell um but again is is this is a rock or is like a a fluid like what it it looks like a rock if you have a look at the picture of ambergris on the article so it comes out like that when it comes out of the um does it come out like that Mm, I think so because it says it, it it forms in their thing and it causes like a blockage. So right. it's probably like, yeah. So it's, um, so it's like kidney stones. Oh, it's, whale, it's the whale version of kidney stones. I wonder how much my kidney stones would be worth. But they don't, but it doesn't pass out Nothing. of their bottom end. They actually vomit it up, I guess. So they. Yeah, my kidney, my kidney stones don't come up my that. bum end either. Uh, I don't know. They'll That's, come out through the pee pee hole. That's an, that's an awkward way no, no, to... No, no, poopy hole. It could fit a pee-pee hole. Yeah, the pee-pee hole. Intestines uh, all the way up Didn't you say the poopy throat. hole? Yeah, I don't know, because it forms in the intestines. And the, yeah, I don't know. But, um, so, yeah. Scientists are weird people. <laughs> How did you get from whale vomit to perfume... Mm extender yes because when they said you know how it's it smells like a sweet smell apparently it's it it also smells like running alcohol without the chemical so they're like oh it smells like alcohol oh i wonder what we could use this for so Who smells alcohol have you ever smelled like ethanol 
Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Like it, it, it knocks you out. Yeah. It, you don't think sweet. <laughs> yeah, but you know the cheap perfume. You, I always wondered why perfume costs so much. Now I know why. Oh. Because the cheap perfume a, don't last that long. Is a fat guy waiting for a whale to vomit? <laughs> a fat guy? Come on, Whaley. Vomit. Uh, uh. What? <laughs> why a fat guy? I'm just picturing a, a fat fat dude. No, Gary. Well. No, Gary vomit, the whale vomit. vomit catcher. But um, so apparently the amount that this guy picked up off the beach was 100 kilos. Jesus. So um, which potentially now is one of the biggest uh, deposits that has ever been found. Um, so he's been contacted apparently by businessmen offering him um, what I said is the twenty-three thousand seven hundred forty pound a kilogram, nine hundred sixty thousand Thai baht. Um, but he has to come and see the quality of it first because he, he's obviously not going to pay that without seeing it. Um, so wholesale in discount as well. <laughs> in total, that would be about two two point four million pounds if he buys the lot. Um, but the guy did go to the police station to let them know that he found this because in case it gets stolen from his home because it's like such like oh. it's treasure I was, I was like why are you telling them um yeah. I, i'm looking at the rock because i've only seen the picture so far of like it split open yeah but like looking at the picture of it outside like the whole thing i'm sure i've seen this rock like a million times in my life <laughs> <laughs> like how much money have i missed out on <laughs> how <laughs> oh how many people do you reckon have seen this and, and have just never? I reckon I've seen it and thrown it back into the dots. ocean. <laughs> yeah, like, oh. It does have a bit of a flat side, a bit of a heavy skimming rock, but it's fancy to go. That's wild, no, isn't I just, it? it? Like, it seems like this fisherman wasn't lucky. It just seems like this fisherman just was aware of what this was. stuff was. Yeah. Mm. Well, there was a um, apparently a a guy in England. Um, in 2016, he found 1.57 kilogram ball of this stuff and he sold it for 50 grand pounds um, the same year that he found it. And then three fishermen from Oman found 80 kilograms and they sold it for 2.3 million pounds. So well, we need to no before before you start having any ideas of trying to get a- ambergris, right? Mm-hmm. It's actually illegal. To what? Get ambergris. Yeah, yeah. So wait, what? Yeah, ambergris. But it's a natural thing. Yeah, yeah. If you you, you don't um because uh what do you call it? Sperm whales are an endangered species. So just like the rhinos, so how you know how the rhinos taking, taking their vomit, dangerous. I don't think so. I think they'll exploit these um, whales, if you know what I mean. Oh, because it says it can sometimes be found in the abdomens of dead sperm whales. Yeah. So maybe they'd kill them to find it. Yeah. So like rhinos, you know how they got the um, the horns of the mm. rhinos and stuff. They'll kill the the animal just so they can get the horns. It's probably the same with this. Don't See, I, don't start killing. I, I wouldn't. I, w- I wouldn't kill the animal. Mm. But I, I would look for um, its spew. I mean, it's a big ocean. It's very hard to... So what do we mean by it's illegal? I mean, illegal to, I guess, kill the the whale to get just the ambergris. Well, that would be. But what about just find, like picking it up if you see it? I mean, if it's on the coast, like this this fisherman, he just kicked it and he goes, oh, that was 2.4 million. <laughs> like, that's not illegal. He didn't, he didn't, like... He was just going for a stroll. But I mean... I don't know. Actually, Anyone that lives near a beach, next time, bring a picture of ambergris with you and search. But look at they, they vary so much. This um, this this bloody rock. You don't actually know. Yeah. Like there's a black one, a yellow one, a white one with um a white one that's clear, and then there's ones that's got all specks in it. It's very um. There's a green one. How about this one? Where do sperm whales live? In the ocean. Yeah, but where do they migrate? Um, the ocean. Any around Australia? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Australian waters. Um, wh- why can't I'm highly you bothered. Puke? I'm highly bothered by this story. Why? Um, why? 
Because I'm Bubba still, Jim? I'm still convinced that I should be a, a at least a billionaire with the amount of ambergris <laughs> I've found in my life. Well, now you know. Don't kick it. <laughs> Okay, I want to hear your thoughts. <laughs> this mum, 31-year-old, had two little babies, two little boys, twins, um, fraternal but looked identical as babies. So she'd get confused as to who's who, blah, blah, blah. Um, one of the twins had a has a condition where he needs biweekly injections. Um, and it was after an incident where the mother-in-law who was babysitting them injected the wrong twin. Oh, shit. Um, he needed to go to hospital, have a reversal, et cetera. And the doctor told the mum, I think you should get, um, or why not consider getting a medical tattoo for the baby that needs the injections? A medical tattoo? Yeah. So she got one for the baby and the mother-in-law is freaking out. So annoyed. I was going to not say that word, but. Okay. What's a medical tattoo and why is the mother law freaking out? It's not her baby. <laughs> the fact it's that the her mum has tattooed, the mum has tattooed a baby. But the medical tattoo, which they they do in circumstances like this, um, is is more like a freckle. Yeah. Like, but it's like they say like the size of the, you know, like an eraser on the end of a pencil, like maybe that size. And it fades. So in two to three years time after getting it, it fades. And by then... Those babies would have developed I've got a medical tattoo. more like features. I got a medical yeah, tattoo. Yeah, you do. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't fade. Where's your medical tattoo? On my chest. Maybe the ones they use in babies do. I why, don't know. Why did you have a medical tattoo? Radiation. Yeah. So I don't they could get pin, it. pin. So they could, so they could pinpoint where to put the radiation in me. Oh. Okay. Because radiation's oh. very dangerous. Yeah, it's very targeted. The radiation uh, treatment now. I mean, so these babies would like a, a bracelet, not a works, something. <laughs> <laughs> like an allergy bracelet. I need the, uh, yeah. Interesting. She could have just made like a friendship said, bracelet. Like and tied there's it so around many the ways around this to not mix oh up two babies. <laughs> Put, so are you, on the, uh, are you on the are you on the side oh of the mother-in-law? Oh my god! No, I'm not. I'm not on the side of the mother-in-law. I just like uh, it's I feel like fix. mixing up two humans is a ridiculous thing to do when you could just avoid it in so many different ways. Oh, uh, it's such a it's such a like if they're piece. your humans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're if you're the one who dresses them, you're the one who cares for them. Like, I. I yeah, I feel like you've got to be pretty negligent in general to mix them up. I'm gonna put a barcode. No, apparently it's it's pretty barcode um, on their bum. It it like if you read the stories about twins <laughs> being mixed up, it happens a lot. For example, I read one where the dad like admitted years and years later that on a few occasions when he's like bathing the boys. He he just he just didn't know who was who. So then he'd put because they had their own like named or did their own like coloured or whatever things for each baby, and so he'd just put it on whatever and just not say. So we so that one would now be Gary and that one's now Barry. And, <laughs> but like so he wouldn't is... tell. How would you name your twins, uh, Gary and but Barry? He, you know, but he didn't tell the wife. He just did it because he's like, I don't so know, I don't know. I'll just is, that one or that this one. is one of those so, where yeah. I feel like the reminder needs to be said that 50% of the people are dumber than average. Like, things can happen a lot. It doesn't mean that it's not a stupid thing to happen. <laughs> I, get, I get bathing. They're not in clothes. But you put the babies in the bathtub. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. So there's probably loads of twins that ended up being not the twin that they were born as. Um, Name-wise. Yeah, I can see that. Happen. Oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's but, interesting. Uh, but uh, to be fair, the baby was um, 
it wasn't just given well the baby's like fully awake it was like the baby had sedation i guess <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah so I mean, that I, happened I, with the mother-in-law one i would just say how can you be upset that the mother took advice from a doctor yeah yeah, yeah. and she made the mistake the mother-in-law made the mistake yeah Oh, was it the mother-in-law? Sorry. Was it the mother-in-law? Inject- yeah, the mother-in-law injected the wrong baby and that's what was like, okay, no, we definitely need to do something about this. What did he oh. get? What was the medical tattoo? A teardrop? A freckle. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> he didn't murder anyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> the poor kid's doing time. <laughs> it's me under their eyes. <laughs> Did you know that India has just gone through, or still I guess kind of is, but just gone through its biggest strike, organised strike in its history, in human history? Did anyone hear about this? No. I didn't either. Dad put this in. But it's very fascinating. Over 250 million workers, including from the coal, telecom, defense production, transport steel, financial institutions, and farmers, have been striking. Um, And do you know why? 250 million is a lot of people. That's almost the entire yeah. population of America. That's more than the working population of America. 250 million coming together is unbelievable. Yes. How was this organized? Like through Facebook or something? Chinese no. whispers. <laughs> Oi, on this day, so, 10th, of, 10th of November, we're going to actually. A- if it was Chinese whispers, China would have the most people <laughs> ever. I think the stoppage was supposed to be two days, November 25th and 26th or 26th and 27th. And it coincides with India's Constitution Day, which I guess commemorates the adoption of the Constitution in 1949. But it was organized by 10 central trade unions plus dozens of other independent federations. And on the farmer's side, there was 300 farmers organizations. Um, They've been doing these strikes for multiple years. I think like 2015, 16, 17, 19, 20, but this is the biggest organized one. And I guess because of COVID, the already existing inequalities have just been exacerbated. So the Indian gross domestic product, their GDP, has declined by 23.9% this year and unemployment rate has gone up to 27%, which is huge. So currently I think Australia's unemployment rate is sitting around 7%. I don't know what it is in England, Mm. I'm not sure. But basically um, they've all come together at the same time uh, and and also some farmers rocked up to this two-day protest like with basically... I mean, their belongings and enough food to last them however long it takes. So they were prepared to just stop. But they are protesting to get the government, well, for a number of things, but they want the government to increase the minimum wage. Mm -hmm. Um, They want them to um, give more like contract work. Um, They want them to decrease the price of essential commodities. Before you go on, go Mm -hmm. on to this, right? 250 million, it just it's popped into my head, 250 million, organizing 250 million people. I find it hard that's, that's to organize people. 14 people to go to a Christmas party, to pick a date, a venue, right, and time. I find it extremely difficult. <laughs> we, find, we find it hard to get five people on a podcast. I just, yeah. 250 million people. So they've been, they're spread out amongst the um, the capitals, the um, state legislative offices. Um, like they're spread out, obviously, because they can't all fit in one tiny area. And But the days were like it's this day and this day, but I guess it's just been, you know, carried on, whatever. But, and, and there's been different 
uh, unions organising it. So they probably all did their own little, you know, faction type things. But, yeah, insane. Hmm. That amount of people, considering Australia has about, what, 20, 20 Five, 25, 25 million? million people. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and they also want to stop the sale of public service uh, units. But, um, and the farmers, the farmers, uh, this is a big thing with the farmers because they've been fighting to have their produce, the price of their produce increased for years. Apparently over the past 25 years, more than 300,000 farmers have committed suicide. More than 50% are in debt. So they want more money for their produce. Um, they want the government to implement a minimum cost for their produce, which is 50% more than what it costs to produce, like to, to manage the crop and produce the crop. Um, they want the government to wipe the debt for 50% of the, those farmers that are in debt so that they can basically start anew and build properly. Um and in terms of the minimum wage that the general workers are asking for is they want 21,000 rupees a month. Can someone just quickly see what that is in in like pounds and Aussie dollars or US dollars? Um, so 21,000 rupees a month minimum and they want 10,000 rupees a month for pension. Did you see how much it is? 285 US dollars. A month. 210 pounds. So it's not even that now per month for the minimum wage. Um, what's 10, what's 10,000 rupees basic, then? Basically a rupee is a penny. <sighs> so they want, t so 10,000 rupees a month is what? A hundred bucks less. A hundred bucks for a pension. Ten yeah. And then um, they want 10 kilograms of food grain to be given to all those in need, like, I guess maybe monthly, I'm not sure, or how I'm not sure how, how often. But basically, they're just fighting for their, for just basic rights. Um, and the government that they're fighting against are just extremely hostile. So they've just been making the situation worse over the, however long they've been in government, their far right government making the situation a lot worse. They're not responding to the strikes. They're just hostile in every which way, basically. So I don't know if it's still it's going on Trump. today or not. Cause that, so the, as I said, the strikes was November 26th and 27th, I think. Um, let's have a look. What do you think about this guys? What do you think? What are your thoughts on this, on the strikes? on how the government's treating them on on people coming together like in general how, how workers are treated in general around the world but it sounds like they're not being treated very well but like every every every, every part of the world's different yeah yeah have you got any more no that's got it oh alexander I'm pretty consistent in mine in consumerism's killing us. Um, I feel like this is a really long conversation. Uh, it kind of is. Yeah. I don't know how to... Uh, it kind of is. But yeah, maybe we'll just keep an eye on that situation and see what actually, what the outcome of those strikes are. Um, I believe some farmers are still striking. <laughs> An Aussie or three have just purchased the Utah Jazz NBA franchise. Wow. The, the whole thing. Emma, yes. Emma, you're not going to believe it. I actually just opened up the article now on my PC and was reading it. No way. <laughs> Tell me about it, CJ. Oh, like, this is going to be our last episode I, for I, the year. Tell me about I, this I article. I just started. It says, Kenan Brooks, the co founder and co chief of software firm. Atalasian join joins growing list of technology mate 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 mate, 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 mate I don't want you to read the whole article out to me I want <laughs> you to tell me how you feel about this article I, I don't know I just saw Aussie buys 
NBA team Let, and I opened it up. As and Emma and, and Emma bring it up. I was like, what? Don't don't worry <laughs> about the intricate detail, Siege. As a I don't know if to call you an NBA fan, but as someone who clearly knows about the NBA, what are your feelings toward this as an Australian as well? It's cool. But I wish you bought like a good team like the Lakers. <laughs> Steve, bang on, CJ. Bang on. I love that response. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what I was hoping for. Oh, that's brilliant. Tell us more, Well, CJ, keep reading. I want your more input from you. The trio. There's a trio of Aussies. Yeah, that's right. So you've got um, Cannon Brooks, uh, Mike Cannon Brooks. Um, and by the way, they bought it for $1.66 billion. Um, Stop saying um. He, he is worth an estimated $15 billion. Anyway, then you've got Ryan Smith, um, founder of survey software company Qualtrics. And you've got a third one. And the reason they bought Utah Jazz is because it's Ryan Smith's lifetime Is his name Ryan team. Sweeney? Smith. Um, there's also a Ryan Sweeney as well. Is he Jackie Robinson's so half brother? <laughs> there's um, Mike Cannon Brooks, Ryan Smith, and Ryan Sweeney. And so Ryan Sweeney's company was an early investor in both of the other companies, basically. But they're all in their forties. They're all going to still keep their full time jobs, but they are going to try and continue Utah Jazz's. Uh, you know, why would someone want to sell a a NBA franchise? That's what I was wondering. The, do they make money all the time or not? The Miller family is who owned it, so I'm not sure. I think if you own an NBA franchise, you've kind of got the idea of timing if you're going to sell it. So, like, if you think that it, if you've recouped all your money in terms of your investment in it anyway, and its value's gone up or whatever, but if you're really not that interested in running it, but then there's a push from people below you to do more and be more engaged and, and have more of a, um, like, I guess, psychological stake in the business because there's owning it and then there's actually like paying attention to owning it. Yeah. Because um, that's like one of the big things when they talk about New Orleans. It's I, I believe it's the people who own the New Orleans Saints NFL team also own the Pelicans and they're clearly football owners. Yeah. Like they don't right. pay attention to the basketball team in the same way as right. they do to the football team so it's i think in that sense i could see why you if you owned it but you didn't really care if it was just an asset consolidation space for your money i could see why you might sell it is, but, is there money to be made from franchises Did oh, they yeah, make the, money so the warriors during uh steph curry's tenure i can't remember the exact numbers i don't know if you want to look this up emma Mm -hmm. But their value increased a ridiculous amount. Like, they're one of the most oh. valuable franchises now. I think over $4 billion they're worth. But they were worth, I believe, when they were bought, less than a billion. Right. Um, so And the, the NBA in general, if you look at the, the, the salary caps and everything, if you look at the revenue stream they're getting in, over the past decade, the amount of money has increased ridiculously. That's why a lot of old players also are very bitter about today's world because they signed contracts, like the biggest contracts at the time, and they were getting pennies compared to what they get now. Right. So there's just a bit of, bit of salt in the wound on those. The Miller family who owned Utah Jazz has owned them since 1985. Um, Ryan Smith, um, one of the buyers apparently got offers from other teams and he's turned multiple offers down. So just, he, he was, Utah, he was yes. waiting for Utah. He was waiting because it, it, it's his lifelong team. Oh, so okay. he's like, finally, the opportunity came up and he basically snatched it up. But it says the Millers bought 50% of the Jazz in 1985 and the remaining half in 1986. Um, since 1984, the Jazz have missed the playoffs only eight times, apparently. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't say how many why. times have they won. <laughs> Never have they? Have they ever nope. won? No. No. Nope. I don't know. 
it's, it's one of those okay. teams, as you said, they don't miss the playoffs, but they don't win either. Mm. <laughs> By the way, the, the Warriors value went up a thousand percent over the last decade. Wow. It's a pretty good investment. Um, I will say this, if for whatever reason, and I've said this before, I have absolutely no intentions of this happening, but if I happen to invent something that makes me a billionaire, I will be buying the Boston Celtics one day. Why would you buy a shit team? Uh oh, let's not go stuck in the mud. Anyways, NYC, New York, um, New York Knicks. How much are they worth? They're the most valuable franchise, $5. I believe. Most I believe, valuable. I believe the most value, the two most valuable, the Los Angeles Lakers and New York Knicks. Oh man! Even though, the, even though the Knicks suck, yes. Because <laughs> the thing is, is if you if you and, have that franchise, and the Lakers don't. Even though they suck, they still make a lot of money. And they don't suck. If one of them sucks, if you if you turn them into a winning team, you would instantly make so much money because of the market who there, are, like the who audience. Owns the New York Knicks, and why wouldn't you want to make that a James Dolan? Yeah, he's just not very he, good owner. Yeah, he just makes horrible decisions. Like he like, had that Spike Lee argument this year. Yeah, and when he threw when he stupid. threw Charles Oakley, yeah, Charles Oakley thrown out and stuff. Well, that v- 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 was the start of pissing everyone off. Yeah, he- and how he traded away their future for Carmelo Anthony. Yeah, yeah. So, some people just aren't good at things. I think that's just yeah. an example of someone not being good at something. Right. Right. But Is yeah, there anything they- else you want to say? No, well, that they bought it for twenty two million and sold it for one point six six billion. Wow. Wow, that's a new, that's a I just, jump wow. in price, wasn't it? I just as I think CJ's reaction at the beginning summed it up. Like he may have been a long time Utah Jazz fan, but I don't imagine a lot of Aussies are going to convert to being Jazz fans. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't even know who these guys are. Tech. He's a t- tech billionaire, basically. Oh, well, we don't we don't travel in the same circles then. <laughs> <laughs> we, we we travel with the trillionaires. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and they wanted him to buy it because they no, wanted not, to not keep the jazz bitches. in Utah. <laughs> mm. Yeah, see. that's the other thing. That's one thing I find interesting. Hey, eh? like you, you buy a franchise and you go, eh, "I'm leaving Utah." <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's it's Utah, weird. Utah could be quite nice to live in. No, I'm just saying you could up and leave whenever you want. It's your franchise to move wherever the NBA goes. Oh, I want to make a franchise in this, and if NBA, if the NBA sees it viable. Or if there's a market there, then they go, yeah, go ahead. But Seattle. it's just weird that. Where would you put one? Like I couldn't, I couldn't see, I couldn't see um, Liverpool like going to Manchester. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's no way that you can just up and leave and go. You know what? We're going to be called Manchester Greens from now on. It's not going to happen. <laughs> That's why I find it very strange. You can do that as a franchise. Like I couldn't well, see it's, Paramount it's like the, Eels. The Clippers are leaving, aren't they? The are Clippers they? Are going, they're. I think in twenty twenty four or something they're going to Compton. To where? Compton, I believe. They're, they're having their own arena built. Um, in Compton. Yeah, it's like the Brooklyn Nets. They were has New that, Jersey. That, but has that changed? Compton is that like a good place to live now? I don't know if you put a multi-million dollar stadium in there. I'm pretty sure it will boost things up. Yeah. Straight out of Compton. Let me see. Clippers are going to Inglewood. Inglewood what? <laughs> Even better. <laughs> That's all I they remember. Ch- I remember these places the by color. like the catchphrases. <laughs> Inglewood what? <laughs> I don't even know any of these places. Um, okay. I mean, this is since I've been an NBA fan. OKC as well. They used to be Seattle Sonics, didn't they? Kevin Durant was drafted to the Seattle yeah. Sonics. Oh, were they Seattle I, Sonics? I Seattle Sonics back. Yeah, I love them. I like I, Sean I, Camp, I, Gary Payton. They, uh, I believe they will have a franchise again, probably in the not too distant future. It's been on the books for a while. A lot of people want them to have the franchise again. Why did they leave? I want to see, I want to see Seattle Sonics back. Is is Seattle a small market, big market? I imagine I imagine it's 
I don't know this, by the way. I'm just guessing. I imagine it's more medium, only because, like, Portland is right below Seattle, so you sort of split a bit there. Yeah. But the Northwest in general is not the most populous place, but Seattle's a pretty populous place. Yeah. Um, is it diverse there? Is it a diverse place, multicultural place? I believe so. Yeah, yeah. we might move there. And it's right on the border of it's right on the border of Canada as well. So if you'd have, I know, like oh, Cana- yeah, I Canadians, move Canadians, there. Canadians, Toronto, yeah, but the West Coast is nowhere near Toronto, so you might have Canadians who would support Seattle because it's just a closer trip, so they could support mm. them. Across the river? Is that across the river? Literally across the river? There's no, no river. There's you just no drive river. across the border. Well, yeah, that's what I meant. <laughs> and, 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 and if you live near Canada, you can drive across the border and get their free medical. Because you know you're not going to get that in America. You can't, you can't get free medical if you're not, if you're not a citizen. <laughs> I'd become a citizen in Canada. <laughs> and just live, and live in America. How do you, what's the Canadian? Uh, how do the Canadian um, talk? What's it? Hoose. Hoose. No, no, hoose. E. E. I'm here hey. to see the doctor. E. Eh? A boot. <laughs> I sound a boot, Scottish. A boot. Talk to a man a about a hoose. E. <laughs> sounds Scot. Sounds Scottish. I saw a moose. <laughs> saw a moose about a hoose. <laughs> About, oh, about. all it's right it anything. sounds like we have come to the end of our intellectual abilities and we or are not tired. so apparently <laughs> um mama or elf so. is signing off i was representing christmas you guys didn't i got black i'm the coal how do you know i'm the coal in the in the uh, thing in the he's, stocking he's, he's <laughs> even, you see this white here that represents santa's, santa's beard. beard thanks cj <laughs> oh nice uh, Alexander? Alex. <laughs> <laughs> um, Yay! Uh, um, yeah, that's it for the year, I think. 2021, let's get it! Let's go. Do you have your, does anyone have any final messages before we sign off? Merry Christmas to everybody. Merry Christmas uh, to Maxi, who's away. Merry Christmas to everyone. And this year can kiss my fat ass. Oh, you're giving <laughs> okay. a lot away there, CJ. He's okay. a, got a fat ass. Uh, Merry Christmas Alexander? to everyone and all. Please go into the new year with a smile on your faces, for it will be better. Oh, alas, I the year have, is over. Um, so 2021's coming, and I usually name my year before I start it, and 2021 will be called Jump Street for me. Because oh, that's okay. the Jump Street Why? year. Yeah, that's Jump Street year. I don't know what that means. Why is it Jump Street? 21 Jump Street. Not seen it. Oh. Loser! I don't think people have. (laughs) See, this year, this year was 2020. It was called The Vision for me. (laughs) What what vision did you have? Um, You didn't need glasses. You saw your wars all year. I didn't need glasses. 2020 vision. I'm naming the year 2021 TBSW Studios. Ooh. That's going to be up and running soon. Hey, if you feel like it, leave us a uh, a, a comment and rate us five stars because that will help <laughs> us be visible. And if you don't rate us five stars, <laughs> you might have a guy with a fat ass knocking on your door one day. <laughs> <laughs> from a kiss from uh, 2020. <laughs> All right. Ciao. Bye. Bye. Say bye-bye. <laughs>